My name is Juan Antonescu. I'm a member of European Parliament. I'm very much interested of, uh, of the topic that uh, we are debating today um, because it's, uh, it's uh, uh, a topic that uh, addresses the issue of children left uh, behind uh, in transitional families. Uh, as um, has been shown in the, um, uh, in the background paper that uh, the organizer have, has, uh, have distributed, uh, the main uh, migration flows are from Romania towards uh, Italy and Spain, from Poland towards UK and Germany, and from the Baltic countries towards the United Kingdom, Ireland, Germany, and Sweden. As for Romania, more than 350,000 children stay at home, while at least one of their parents goes to work abroad. Uh, this figure is four times bigger than the numbers uh, from the official statistic. Uh, so I'm afraid that this is an indication of the fact that even the authorities do not realize the ampli amplitude of the phenomena, hence cannot prepare proper strategy for tackling uh, this issue. That's why uh, I, uh, I consider this um, debate to be important. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, this uh, topic will be uh, on uh, the Parliament's and another, uh, the other institution, European institutions and national uh, governments, but on the issue of the uh, Parliament uh, from now on as a, as a very important um, uh, topic. And uh, I think that, uh, uh, I hope that today's discussion to be, to be a very fruitful uh, one. And I give the, I let the floor to, uh, to the organizer. Thank you. The roundtable is organized by Albero della Vita Foundation in cooperation with the Patrizio Paoletti Foundation as educational partner and with the Eurochild uh, as, a part, as network uh, partner and uh, together with the network Children Left Behind. I really appreciate your presence today. Uh, I especially thank uh, MEP Angelilli for hosting uh, today the meeting. She can be t with us today and she sends special greetings to us. And uh, I, I really thank you for coming, for supporting the event, and for contributing to today's discussion. Today's discussion. Uh, what is happening today is that we are coming back in the European Parliament after two years, uh, speaking about uh, something that we consider as a huge issue, a, a very relevant uh, European issue that is investing more than one million children in uh, Europe. An issue that is in a still has an incredibly low level of knowledge and recognition among, among uh, European actors and uh, among member states involved. Uh, an issue that is string, uh, strongly related to several policy areas of the European Union, such as migration, labour market and mobility, economical development, poverty, child's, children's rights, and uh, what we are going to do today is to shortly present the issue of transnational families, shortly because all of us um, are quite aware of, uh, of the issue, and uh, also because we distributed a background document that you may find also in your, in your folder. So we, we will not speak too much about the issue. We will try to understand, most of all, uh, what to do. And today it will be a, a practical roundtable uh, aiming at finding new solution and discussing about the issue at a deeper level. So we are paying more attention uh, to the situation of Romania, which is uh, for sure a very relevant uh, European case, and introducing, in introducing some work that we have been doing so far at policy level. Um, so most of all, today I will ask you to, to focus on what we can do more in order to inform and sensitize, uh, to step forward a better recognition of the issue. And secondly, uh, to define more precisely role and responsibilities of European and national levels, uh, and how they, the two can cooperate more to, for, for the issue. And to focus uh, specifically also in, on the investments uh, in terms of European fundings, uh, funds, uh, both for European programs and uh, for uh, structural funds, uh, how we can put priority uh, to, in, in this building framework. Um, consider that today we, have, we are here represented uh, 
European institution. We have members of the European Parliament and Commission, a representative from Commission, and uh, we have a representation from member states of Romania. Uh, we have an NGO involved, and uh, we, we also have the special presence of Eurochild for an overall understanding of the issue uh, of the roles and, method and methodologies inside the European policies for children's rights and well-being. Um, just a, a couple of words about L'Albero della Vita as uh, organizer of the event. L'Albero della Vita is an international organization born in uh, 1998 in Italy, where we still have uh, our uh, headquarters. And uh, we are working since 2010 as a family of NGOs based in some European countries with foreign office in Calcutta, Nairobi, Lima, and uh, several um, activities directly led or in partnership that involve children in uh, need in several regions. Our areas of activities are mainly four. The first is child protection. The second is citizenship, education, and participation. And the third is sustainability and food security. Right yesterday, we had a round table in Lima about this issue. And children in migration, that's today issue is part of uh, this area, of course. Uh, what we generally do about mm, migration processes uh, in terms of uh, attention, uh, we, we pay much attention about vulnerable children involved in, uh, in migration processes. And we work in terms of social assistance, like in the case of Romania, we, wor we, work, uh, we have been working the last three years together with Alternative Sociale, uh, with the Omelon children and remigrated children in Romania. We have some activities in terms of research and publication, like the one we presented three weeks ago in, uh, here in the European Parliament, dealing about social integration and uh, remigration of uh, Romanian families moving to Spain and, uh, and to Italy. Uh, we have activities in terms of awareness raising and lobby, like today, I would say. And uh, another important activity is uh, to promote discussion, exchanges, and networking. In the end of 2009, we gathered a network of organizations, NGOs, universities, and institutions, sharing a strong commitment about the issues of children left behind. Thank you very much, Ivano, and for the flattering introduction. Um, so I'm uh, Jana Hainsworth. I'm based here in Brussels as Secretary General of the Eurochild Network, which is a Europe-wide network with members in 35 European countries. Uh, we have 122 uh, full members, um, and our mission is to promote the rights and well-being of children in, in Europe. Um, so uh, Albero de la Vita is one of our active member organizations. Uh, Ivano is a member of our management board. And so they uh, kindly asked me to chair this session this afternoon, which, as Ivano said, is very much a continuation of work that has been started way back in 2009. And the uh, emphasis that has been done on trying to raise attention to the issue of children who are left behind from parents who are migrating for work. Um, so this is really a culmination of work. We're, we're not very numerous in the room. I think this will allow us to have more of a kind of dialogue with about what um, what we can do in the future around this issue. Um, I'd certainly thank very much um, your presence, Joanna, for be, for, and also for hearing from your side you know, what we could do more of in the European Parliament. Um, I know that um, Lima Andrikieni was due to come, and she's very interested in the issue, but is not unable, unfortunately, due to other... Ah, you're here. Great. So we have the assistant. Um, so hopefully we can uh, try to raise the uh, visibility of this issue, but also look more concretely that what are the, how, how are we going to address it and in, in what policy areas. Um, just to say that this is the second time I'm in this room this mo today. Um, this morning, Eurochild uh, joined with the AGE platform, so the platform of older people, but uh, which is promoting uh, intergenerational solidarity. And we launched the, a study on grandparents as carers. Um, and it was a study that was done by a member organization of Eurochild surveying across Europe um, what services are available for grandparents. And I think it's a very nice opportunity and, and coincidence that I should then be coming back this afternoon to talk about children left behind since 
very, I wouldn't put a percentage because I, I think it's a very anecdotal, but such a high percentage of children who are left behind are then in the care of grandparents. Um, and certainly what um, one of the outcomes from this study was the increasing role of grandparents in kinship care. So where parents, for whatever reason, why they, whether they're migrating, whether it's due to child protection issues, whether it's due to alcohol, uh, drug abuse, or situations where the child can no longer be cared for by their parents, then it is largely the grandparents that are taking up the slack and looking after their children directly. So what we were looking at this morning was what services are there to support grandparents um, and where um, children are in kinship care and the grandparents are taking care of them, then they, it, there should be more recognition of their role and, and support given in the same way that it would be given to foster parents who might not be biologically related. And this is actually not the case in most countries, that there is not no support for, for grandparents. So I think this very much applies to countries where there are large numbers of parents migrating, <coughs> the children are left in largely the, their extended family and it's often the grandparents that are the primary carers. So it, it's a nice link to be able to make, purely coincidentally, but um, certainly there will be other areas that we can identify in the discussion about where this particular agenda fits into other uh, advocacy or lobby areas to improve children's rights and well-being. Just to say you're a child, um, all of our activities are based fundamentally on on promoting the UNCRC, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. We're delighted that we have the Child Rights Coordinator from the European Commission with us today. Um, and we feel we had a mini success with the adoption recently in March or February of the European Commission recommendation on investing in children, um, which is an important uh, objective of the European Commission to Invest, to, to put priority on investment in children and seeing that as a motor of social and economic progress in the EU. But uh, Margaret will say more about that uh, in her presentation. So before we go into the discussion, we have, um, I believe, two uh, short videos. One is uh, a video of a true story of a child left behind in Romania, um, and she's living there with her grandmother. Um, and then a video of a, a mother of a who has left the child, and she's based in Italy. So thank you to Albero da Vita the, those, for the two short clips. It's a very emotive issue, um, and I, yeah, I think what will come out of the discussion is what is the situation on the ground, how, how we can know more about the issue and what the implications there are for, for policy um, implications. So I will give the floor now to George Pascaro, who is from uh, Alternative Sociale Association. Uh, 